I'm Sudarshan Koirala and welcome back to Data Science Basics. This video is the 14th video in the Databricks series and I'm going to cover the Databricks CLI in this video, right? So what is Databricks CLI? CLI refers to command line interface and it says here the Databricks CLI utility provides an easy to use interface to automate the Databricks platform from your terminal, command prompt or automation scripts. If you haven't watched my previous video, just a recap i have created the videos and this is the 14th as i said there are already 13 videos in the series refer to that and if you are new to cli stuff so the terminal commands there is also a playlist about most no terminal commands you can refer to that if you want or if you need right what i'm going to first show you how you can install the databricks cli locally in your terminal configure that and also later I will show you how you can do the same things in the Databricks UI itself. Let's get started. This is the documentation I'm going to follow and I will provide the link in the description. What we need to do first is as it is mentioned here we need to use call to install the CLI. There are different ways to install but I'm going to use the call. Make sure that you have call installed in your a terminal for that if you go to your terminal and just type call it should show me. try call help or call something something right or we can just say call help right let's see okay it's there right once it is there we are good to go otherwise you need to download the call for that also i'll provide the link in the description so this is call website you can download based on your machine that's all. What we do, what we need to do now is go here and copy this command. But before that, let me copy this first. And if I go to the terminal, let me clear the screen. If I just run data bricks here, it says command not found, meaning that it is not installed, right? So if I do control V just to install, I say allow. So if I run this, it will throw me the error because it says that I need to have sudo writes. So, and there is also the command that is being provided for us to do that. What we can do is just before this SS, you can run sudo and enter. It is going to install. Okay, it's install. Install Databricks CLI version 0 0.205. And this is the location where it is installed. You can run again Databricks, enter, and you can see that. It shows something in the terminal, meaning that it is installed. It provides all the information for us. Databricks CLI, uses Databricks, Databricks, OK space. There are many things here, as you can see here. All the commands can be run from the terminal. Okay, now we install the Databricks. What next, right? Let me clear the screen. The main idea of using Databricks CLI, as I said before, is to connect to your Databricks account, right? This is installed and what we need to do is Databricks configure. But many of you might get confused here. That's the reason I'm creating this video. If I do here Databricks configure only, enter, it asks me Databricks host, right? What is the host? If you go to the Databricks account, if you go to the UI part, you need to copy this, this part until Databricks.com, right? I will copy this go to the terminal and if i do control v i need to remove some things here because i'm doing https two times here so i can just remove this part so i roll enter okay it asks me personal ss token this is the tricky part here in the premium version we can create the personal ss token but in the databricks community edition we cannot create the personal ss token we need to authenticate using the username and password. Just to show you, if you go to the Databricks UI, on this user settings, there should be a place to create the personal access token, but we cannot do that. So we cannot proceed with this thing. You can just do control C. So how to achieve that, right? There is another documentation. Here, let me show you the next one. It says here, authentication for Databricks automation. I will again provide the link in the description. There are many things here, but what I'm going to show you is the basic authentication. If you go to this menu here, in this article, there is basic authentication. I will click this one. So it is taking me here. What we can do here is 
provide the username and password in order to authenticate that. For that, what we need to do is copy this. And I'm going to go with the profile. Uh, what is profile? I'll show you later. But let me copy this. And if I now go to the terminal, so where to paste that? Always go to the home folder, CD, and then this tilde sign. If you don't know where in the keyboard is the tilde, just copy from somewhere. It is CD tilde. Now I am the home. You can do PWD. I am on the slash home slash code space. This is my home directory. So I need to create a file here named. You can say torch dot data bricks CFG. Right. And if I enter this, it is created here now. I need to open this, right? I will use Veeam dot Databricks. You can only do Veeam this. Yeah. Now it is open here. I need to paste here. How to paste? If you type I in the keyboard, now we are in the insert mode. I can do control. It is being pasted here. I'm not going to show you my username and password, but what you need to do here is provide your username of Databricks, your email address, and the password that you use when you log into the Databricks account. And the host is what we just copied before, right? I will again go to the part. You need to just copy this part from the UI. So just copy this, right? And go here and paste in this URL part, right? Terminal is here. You can navigate here. And you can, by the way, edit this somewhere in the notepad if you find it difficult to use the Veeam, right? I will do control V. So this is the host. And username, password, provide your username, password. And then name, profile name, you can just give a random name you want. I will just give here the text, for example. Okay, test. You can provide anything. Let's say that you provide text. I will come back once I paste my username and password and save this. How to save this? You can just type escape, colon, and WQ. That's how you can save this. Okay, now I replace my username and password there. Now we are connected. If you data bricks, and if I do clusters, if I do list, meaning that I, am, I want to list the clusters. It, if I run enter, it will say here me all the different clusters. Two of them are terminated and one is running. If I now go to my Databricks UI, if you go to the compute part, that is where you can get the clusters. There are three clusters. Two of them are terminated. One is running. That is how now we are connected to Databricks UI from our term. Now you can roll many, many commands here. As I said you before, you can just run Databricks and you will get all the information here, which one you want to use. But one thing you need to be careful here is in the community edition, not all these commands are supported. Only the basics one are supported. For example, the, I just show you the cluster. If you want to get the name of the cluster, let me just clear the screen. Let me again run the command with the up arrow. Okay, cluster list. Okay, now you might be wondering, why did I provide the profile? What here I, I can just run without the profile. The intention of profile is, let's say that you have two different accounts and you want to list the clusters, for example, from two different workspace. But if you just do Databricks cluster list, and if you just have one, then it will just list that. You don't need to provide the profile. But if you have two of those, this is how you can do you can run Databricks dash dash profile and give the name of the profile. Our profile is test and then run the normal commands. Say it is clusters list. If I do the same, the same answer is being provided. But let's say that you were in your, because for us, this is the community edition. We just have one or a space for host. Let's say in the premium version, then this name will be different you can connect two different Databricks account and list all the things from here. That's the main idea here. Okay, so that is what you can uh, install the Databricks CLI and then configure the Databricks CLI using the basic authentication, right? But how to do the same thing in the Databricks website itself? If I go to the Databricks website, make sure that you have cluster already running. 
Now, if you go to the admin settings in order to enable the UI, just to show you that, if I go to some notebook, let's say this is the notebook. If you go to the view section here, there is this web terminal, but that is blurred there, meaning that it is not enabled there. But admins can only enable that, and we are the admins in the community edition. We can enable that. How to do that? If you go to this admin settings and workspace settings, you can know that where is web terminal. But I will just source from here. It's easier. If you do web, the web terminal is being disabled, meaning that you need to enable that. I will click this enable here. And it says that you need to refresh the page for this to take into effect. So I will refresh the page. It is being refreshed now. So now if I go back to the DVFS, and if I refresh this page also again, right? And now if I go to the view, it's still web terminal is not shown here. Why? Because you need to have the cluster running already and they attach to this particular notebook. So now if I go here and attach this cluster, so now the cluster is being attached. If you go to the view, now you can see that the web terminal is being activated. You can click this web terminal. It will open in the new tab in browser. And now you can see that this is the terminal. And if you do here data bricks, it is not going to show you because command not found. So you can now follow what we went through when we configured the local terminal. So you can start using the Databricks commands already in the UI itself so that you don't need to install terminal if you don't have a local. One thing you need to remember is that this terminal session is ephemeral, so it will go away if you close or refresh the browser tab. And here is also the instruction here. If you want to have a persistent terminal session, you use tmux. I'm not going to go through tmux right now, but you get the idea. Now you can use the Databricks CLI commands from the UI itself. So yeah, that's all for this video. Now I hope you know how to uh, install and configure the Databricks CLI because we are going to use in the future some of the uh, which might need the Databricks CLI and it is good idea to actually have the Databricks CLI knowledge so that if you do some automation tasks or something in the future, you can already run from your terminal itself. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.